All right, we are going to start chapter 12, which chapter 12 is all about the physical properties of matter. Um, two big concepts that this chapter focuses on are density and buoyancy, which I know density shouldn't be a stranger to you. We talk about it a lot um, in earth science class because it has so many things to do with um, how processes work on earth here. Uh, but we talk about it a lot in physical science as well. So in this chapter, we're going to be answering the questions, what is density and how can you measure it? Uh, what do things, um, what things does density depend on? And how does a steel ship float when a steel marble sinks? How can that even make any sense, right? When that steel ship uh, weighs a lot more. So we're going to do 12.1 today, which 12.1 focuses solely on density. So when we look at, if you look at the container ship in the upper right hand corner here, uh, clearly you guys know that weighs a lot, weighs a lot. So why is that not sinking? So something must be happening there because we know that it weighs a lot. So you can't just say it has to do with weight. And you take a look at something like the Titanic, which you see on the bottom picture there, why did that sink? And yes, density is a factor in that. So density, definition of density is the mass of matter per unit volume. So two of those things we've already talked about this year and that is mass, and that is volume. So density isn't really a brand new topic to us. So how much mass is in a specific volume is density. So we need you to go ahead and copy the formula uh, down there on the bottom of the slide. Um, so density equals mass over volume. The Greek symbol for, I forget the name of it is right now off the top of my head, but that is the Greek symbol uh, that we use for density. Um, if it's easier for you to just use D equals M over V, that is totally fine as well. We are okay with that, especially in the ninth grade level. So density equals mass divided by volume. On the right-hand side there is what we call a triangle. They're really nice if you kind of use these triangles to do the algebra ahead of time before you do the math. So the density one's easy. We just said that, mass divided by volume. If you wanted to solve for mass, you're going to take the bottom two and multiply them by each, other, by each other. So density times volume or solving for volume, mass divided by density. So when you look at these cubes, we placed them on some balances and I can see that the steel cube weighs 7.8 grams, the aluminum cube weighs 2.7 grams, and the water um, let's say a cube full of water, if we had that magical power to do that, would weigh one gram. So all of these things have a different mass, but they are the same volume. They then would have a different density, because remember that's what density is, mass per volume. So mass per volume is the density. If I have a greater mass per volume, it is going to have a higher density. So if I look at steel, Steel has a density of 7.8 grams per milliliter. Aluminum, 2.7 grams per milliliter. The water, one gram per milliliter. Air, clearly something that we all know isn't very dense at all, right? Um, 0 0.001 grams per milliliter. So to calculate density, um, we're going to need to calculate volume and then Mass. So volume, we are also not a stranger to. Remember, volume is the amount of space an object takes up. We can also sometimes say it's capacity, how much it holds, if you want to think about something like a pitcher or a cup. Uh, so how do we measure liquids in science? The units that we use are either going to usually be milliliters or liters. Remember, we like to do liters with a capital L so that it doesn't look like a 1, because if you do a lowercase l, it'll often get confused for a 1. We often use graduated cylinders at this level. When you start to get up in higher level levels, you're going to be using different tools to measure volume, but for us, it is graduated cylinders. When we measure with graduated cylinders, it's very important that you read at eye level. You don't hold that grad cylinder up off the table, kind of bend down so you can see it. And what you will notice, which we most often measure water in a graduated cylinder, you'll see the picture on the left-hand side there, that the water climbs up the side of the glass a little bit. Remember, water and glass like each other. They are attracted to each other. So it's important when you measure it, you are going to measure the lower part of that eye level meniscus. Um, so that's the volume. For measuring solids, the units we're either going to use are milliliters, cubic centimeters, or cubic meters. So remember, uh, we talked about this earlier as well, one milliliter is equal to one cubic centimeter. So those units um, are equivalent to each other. 
Uh, tools, graduated cylinders, and it looks like I left off one thing on here because it's not just graduated cylinders. It would also be rulers um, or a meter stick. So we can be using those tools as well, especially if I have a solid object. If I have a rectangular prism or a cube, length times width times height, and now you can see where those measurements come from because if I'm taking a centimeter times a centimeter times a centimeter, then I'm going to get cubic centimeters. Uh, gradu or a cylinder on the bottom, pi radius squared times height. So same thing again, cm times cm times cm, so my answer is going to be in cubic centimeters. Volume is a three-dimensional answer, so you need to make sure your answer is such also in three dimensions. Now, if I have these nice, beautiful geometric shapes like cubes, rectangular prisms, cylinders, I can use those formulas. But if I have something like a key, as you can see in the picture here, that is not a, a geometric shape, we will often use what is called the water displacement method to find out the volume of that. So let's say I had the grad cylinder at 50, you drop the key in, it now went up to 53. What is the uh, volume of that key, obviously it's three. So it's the difference between the two. So that's the water displacement method. You're measuring how much water the object displaces because it must be equal to its volume. So we can have different density units depending upon what we measured and how we measured it. We can have a gram per milliliter. We can have a gram per cubic centimeter, a kilogram per cubic meter. Now you can start to t think about we're dealing with much bigger things or a kilogram per liter. So much larger things that we can use. We most often use the top two in science, nine grams per milliliter or grams per cubic centimeter. But it's so important when you're reporting units for density, you got to include both because density is a mass per volume. So if it's a mass per volume, I have to have a mass per volume answer. So some densities of common materials, just to look at the table here. Uh, liquid water, this one should be definitely committed to memory. Water is one gram per milliliter one gram per milliliter. So think about what if I had 50 milliliters of water? How much is that going to weigh? 50 mils of water. It should be 50 grams. Um, I'm not gonna go through all of these on the table there, but if you look at some of those in there, um, Pine, most of us know if you guys take a piece of pine wood, you throw it in water, what is it going to do? It's going to float. Look at that. That's why it has a density of 0.44 grams per milliliter. Steel, on the other hand, usually, if we don't go back to our ship example, let's say I have a solid chunk of steel and I just toss it in the water, it's probably going to sink. Look at its density, 7.8 grams per milliliter. So definitely water is the one you want to commit to memory and just kind of keep in mind here, you know, usually things that float are going to have a density less than one. Things that don't float are going to have density more than one on average. And I'm going to use that on average. Density is a characteristic property. So what that means is, is if you take something that is a compound or a pure substance, something like steel, aluminum, water, it doesn't matter how much you have of it, it's always going to be the same. Steel's density is 7.8 grams per cubic centimeter. It is never any different. It doesn't matter if I have that cube. It doesn't matter if I have that steel nail on the bottom. Steel will always be 7.8 grams per cubic centimeter. So when you look at measuring the mass and the volume, yes, those things change. But when you do the math, the density will always be the same. So 7.8 grams per cubic centimeter. It's actually an easy way to identify things. Uh, for example, fool's gold and um, gold they have a different density from each other. So if you want to show up at the jewelers and say, hey, I want to cash this in and get some gold out of it, you can easily do a density test on it. They are not the same thing. Gold will always have a specific density. So what does this even mean, density, when you start thinking about it from an actual like molecular standpoint? If something has a low density, so something like air, we saw that had a density that was really low, what that means is, is there's lots of spaces between the atoms. So if a substance has a lower density, it has more spaces between its atoms. If it has a higher density, what that means is, like the steel, there's less spaces between the atoms. There's less room for them to move around. Another fun fact, most substances in liquid form are less dense than the same substance in solid form. And think about why that is. When you are taking something and you are adding energy to it, you're making those molecules or those atoms move farther apart and they would naturally become less dense, right? Um, the one difference is water. So solid water, which we all know as our friend ice, has a density of 0.9 grams per milliliter, and liquid water has a density of 1. And we should have all have known that because when we put ice in our glass, 
it doesn't sink to the bottom, the ice floats to the top. Not to get into too high level chemistry stuff, but it has to do with um, how water molecules are bonded. So in liquid state, water molecules are closely held together by what we call weak hydrogen bonds. When water freezes and it reaches its solid state, those hydrogen bonds become stable and actually take those water molecules and move them farther apart from each other. So that is why it actually becomes less dense. Now besides the fact that it's cool that our ice floats on glass or on our glass of ice water, if you start to think about how different our world would be if this didn't happen, it is especially, think about us in northern Minnesota when the ice freezes on the lakes up here. If the ice froze and it didn't stay floating on the top of the water, think about what it would do. That water sink to the bottom, keep sinking to the bottom, and now think about what life would be like in these lakes. Do you think fish are going to be surviving that? Absolutely not. So it's really kind of cool that this actually happens because it has a big role in nature. The fact that ice is less dense than water. And like we like I have in that third thing there, that is not normal. Normally it's the opposite. Normally the solid becomes more dense because those molecules are more tightly packed to each other. So to determine density of something, to find the density of a material, all you need to do is find those two things. Find the mass, find the volume. Uh, mass we all know is by using the triple beam balance in the back. So we use triple beam balances, measure it in grams, and then depending upon what substance you have, as we discussed in the lecture here, volume is determined a little bit differently. Sometimes we'll do problems with these. So let's say we give you density and we give you mass and you need to solve for volume. Take the mass divided by the density. That's all you have to do. If I want to solve for mass and I'm given density and volume, multiply the two together. So use the triangle. Um, we don't often expect you to memorize formulas. This is probably one, though, that you should have committed to memory. So density is mass divided by volume. So here's just an example from the book. So a student measures the mass of five steel nuts to be 96.2 grams, and they displace 13 milliliters of water. So calculate the density. They gave us the mass. They give us the volume. So there's the mass, 96.2 grams, divided by the volume of 13 milliliters, and it gives me the answer of 7.4 grams per milliliter. So important to have the grams per milliliter because that is what density should always have. It should always have a mass per volume.